Hello, good evening. Hello, Hello good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. We Hello, are... teacher. Hello. We are in the ending of this week. We are ending another week. And we are just going to have one more week to complete this course. Una semanita más y terminamos todo el curso. So we are going to keep going. We are almost done. Estamos casi al final. So um, remember that we have um, an activity uh, for today. Yes, that's okay. No hay problema, Caterina. Um, we have an exercise in which we're going to write a paragraph uh, talking about a, a tiring day. And I have my paragraph because I'm going to read my paragraph first. And then I will um, ask for help for some of uh, you to read your paragraphs. So this is my paragraph about this story, full story. And I'm going to read it. So let me do something with this. So, in this case, I have this one and I wrote the following things. So it says, yesterday was a really tiring day. I woke up at 7 a.m. I went to the bakery. I bought bagels and bread, then I prepared breakfast. After that, I started doing housework at 8 a.m. My activities are baking and mopping the floor, clean the dust in the, in the furniture, clean the windows, wash the dishes, do some ironing, take out the trash, do the laundry. Do you think I did a lot of things? Yes, I did a lot of things, but wait, there is more. I cooked dinner, then went out to the garden, fed the dog, watered the flowers and trees, mowed the lawn, washed the car, then I got into the house at 6 p.m. and finally took a nap for an hour. Ese es el ejercicio, ¿verdad? Hacer un pequeño párrafo con las ideas que ya teníamos ahí en la parte de arriba de la imagen. La mía es esa. Ayer fue un día muy cansado. Me levanté a las 7, fui a la panadería, compré eh, bagels y compré pan, preparé el desayuno. Después hice el trabajo en la casa, ¿verdad? La, las cosas de la casa a las 8. Mis actividades son, eh, en este caso, bacon es like eh, pasar la aspiradora o aspirar, pero en nuestro país no es tan común. Um, trapié el piso, limpié el polvo de los muebles, limpié las ventanas, lavé los platos, eh, planché, saqué la basura, eh, lavé la ropa. ¿Piensas que o pensaste que hice un montón de cosas? Sí, hice un montón de cosas, pero espera, hay más. Then, in the next paragraph, eh, we have, I cook dinner. Then went out to the garden. It's like, eh, cociné la cena. Luego eh, salí al patio, alimenté al perro, regué las flores y los árboles, eh, recorté como la grama o el césped, eh, lavé el auto y luego entré a la casa a las seis de la tarde y finalmente hice una siesta de una hora. And just have like um, a nap, a short nap for an hour. So now, who wants to read the paragraph that you create? Who wants to share that information with the group? ¿Quién quiere leernos el párrafo? Uh, I... Okay, Francisco, it's your time. Okay, and um, this Saturday was a really trading day. I is say I will look at uh, seven a.m. 
I went to the bakery, I booked bread and bread, then I prepared breakfast. After that, I started doing housework at 8 a.m. My activities are baking and mopping the floor, cleaning the doors in the food furniture, cleaning the windows, wash the dishes, do some ironing, take all the trays, do the laundry, do you think I did a lot of things? Yes, I did a lot of things, but wait, there is more. I cook dinner, they went out to the garden, feed the dog, water, water the flowers and trees. <laughs> Move the lawn, wash it, the car the I got into the house at 6 p.m. and finally took a nap for an hour. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank someone you. else that wants to share the paragraph? Alguien más que quiera compartir eh, el párrafo? Me, teacher. Tell me, Elizabeth. Okay. Todo, ¿verdad? Yes. Eh, donde dice yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. What a trying day. Yesterday was a really tiring day. I woke up at 7 a.m. I went to bakery about bagels and bread and then I prepared breakfast. After that I start doing house housework at 8 a.m. My activities are baking and mopping the floor, cleaning the dust in the furniture, clean the windows, wash the dishes, do something ironing take out the trash, do the laundry. Uh, do, you, do you think I did a lot of things? Yes, I did a lot of things, but wait, there is more. I cooked dinner. Then when I went out to the garden with the dog and waited the flowers and trees, Move with, move, I don't know. <laughs> the load uh, washes the car. Then I got into the house at 6 p.m. And finally took, took a nap for an hour. Good, thank you, Elizabeth, very well. One more participant, someone else that wants to share the um, the paragraph, solo una más que quiera compartir el párrafo y continuamos con las otras actividades que tenemos. Mitza. Ok. Yesterday was, was a really chilly day. I wake up at 7 o'clock a.m. I went to the bakery. I bought bulges and bread Then I prepared breakfast. After that, I started doing house server at 8 o'clock a.m. My activities I buy are vacuum and muffin the floor, clean the dust in the, in the future, clean the window, wash the dishes, do some uh, ironing, take out the trash, do the laundry. Do you think I did a lot of things? Yes, I did a lot of things, but wait, there is more. I cook a dinner, then went out to the garden, Felt the dawn, watered the flowers and trees. 
Ay, lo movió, te no lo moví. Ahí, hoy. I don't. Te, I te hizo hacia, o sea, se movió hacia atrás y te hizo hacia el frente. Ya ahorita. Move with the glass. Wash on the car. Then I got into the house at six o'clock p.m. and finally, finally took a nap for an hour. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. So this is. This is movió. This is movió. Hi. Oh my God. I don't know. I was like very surprised when this when you say that. So, this is the um, writing exercise that we have for the past. Uh, in this case, we were like uh, using some of the words that we have in the uh, exercise, and we can transform those words into the simple uh, past. And also, I'm using in this case some words in present, but in that case, it's just for the activities that we uh, have to do, because in that case, it's not just for the day before. Uh, we can also do all of the things every day. Así que hay partes donde vamos a tener como palabras en presente porque lo hacemos todos los días, no simplemente ayer. So that's what, um, this was the, the exercise or the reading exercise that we have for the past topic. Now, I'm going to share with you this video of the simple past. But in this case, uh, this video is related to the pronunciation. But let me uh, go to the platform. In this video, you are going to hear the pronunciation of the, um, the simple past ED ending. In this case, it's just for the, um, uh, for the verbs that end in ED, not for the irregular verb, just for the regular verbs. Vamos a escuchar la pronunciación de los verbos regulares que terminan en ED, o sea, cuál es la pronunciación, porque En este caso hay eh, sonidos como la T, como la D y como la ID eh, que suenan en esas palabras. So we are going to listen carefully the information that we have on the video related to um, the pronunciation. So let's go to the platform and let's hear the information. Um, we're going to listen at the whole video and then I'm going to explain something for you in May a little feedback in Spanish of the information. Así que vamos a escuchar toda la información del video. Luego les voy a hacer un pequeño feedback en español sobre lo que se dice ahí. So, let's go. Let me explain that. I would like for you to pay attention to my throat. Hi everyone. In this class you'll learn to sound natural when pronouncing simple past verbs. The ED ending of simple past verbs has three different sounds. Let's listen and practice. These verbs end in t. Worked. Watched. These verbs end in d, cleaned, stayed. These verbs end in id, invited, visited. In order to understand when we'll have a t, d, or id sound, we need to understand a couple of concepts. Voiceless and voice sound. So let me explain that. I would like for you to pay attention to my throat and my fingers. I'm going to put two fingers on my 
throat, particularly on my Adam's apple. I would like for you to do the same as well. Now, I would like for you to repeat after me. Watch, turn, watch, turn, watch, turn, watch, turn. Whenever we pronounce the verb watch, there is no vibration on our Adam's apple. This is called a voiceless sound. However, whenever we pronounce the verb turn, there is lots of vibration on my Adam's apple. This is called a voice sound. Now let's try to understand the it sound. We will pronounce it whenever we have verbs that have a T and a V sound. For example, visit has a T sound. So we pronounce the past as visited. Land has D sound. So we pronounce the past as landed. Let me show you more examples of words that are voiceless and voice to help you understand this topic better. Another method to use is following this particular sounds. These sounds are voiceless. P, K, S, H, C, H, G, H, T, H, S, S, C, X. Let's pronounce these words now. I would like for you to repeat them after me. Helped, looked, washed, watched, laughed, breathed, kissed, danced, fixed. The following consonants have voice sound. L, N, R, G, V, S, W, Y, Z. Let's pronounce these words now. I would like for you to repeat them after me. Called, cleaned, offered, damaged, loved, used, followed, enjoyed, amazed. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to pronounce all to understand better information that we have on the video we are going to have just this um we're not going to share the screen we're going just to find a uh, what is the message that he is explaining to us in el caso de eh, las pronunciaciones así como aparece en el video tenemos las voiceless y las voice, las voiceless son aquellas que no llevan vibración a la hora de pronunciarse. Y las eh, voice son las que sí llevan eh, la vibración. ¿Cómo sabemos nosotros que son voiceless o voice? Por la vibración que se hace en la garganta, que es lo que él mostraba. Al ponerse los dos dedos en la garganta y sentir la vibración según eh, la palabra que estaba pronunciando, como el caso de turn, que hacemos la vibración en la garganta. Hay palabras, el, como en el que aparece en el cuadro que él ponía casi al final, que terminan en P, K, C, H, S, H, G, H, T, H, S, S, C, I, X, que son voiceless no nos van a producir vibración en la garganta. En cambio, las que llevan L, N, R, o, eh, o R, G, B, S, W, Y y Z, sí van a producir vibraciones en la garganta y por eso son voice. Eh, y en el caso de las ID, o las que terminan con ID, la, la pronunciación del ID, son aquellas que tienen sonidos de T, 
y sonidos de D. Cuando la palabra termine en T o tenga un sonido de T, se va a decir y de al final cuando se le agregue eh, el ed a su verbo, igual que las que llevan de. Y esa es la, la um, the explanation that he was giving to us eh, related to the voiceless sounds and the voice sound, because you know that we make sounds through the throat. So in that case, we can eh, notice what are the words that eh, produce some vibrations and other uh, words that are not producing that vibration when we are talking. So, esa es la explicación, ¿verdad? De los endings, de los ED endings, y de las voiceless and voice words. So, let's go to the check, knowledge check number four. I mean, in the section number four, knowledge check, 4.12. Vamos a realizar el knowledge check 4.12. Porque acuérdense que tenemos que terminar el, la sección 4 en, en esta sesión. So, let's see. Knowledge check 4.12. Unscramble the questions. Eh, vamos a encontrarle forma, ¿verdad? A estas preguntas. Unscramble the questions by putting the words in the correct order. Remember to type the question mark. En este vamos a encontrar el orden de las preguntas y vamos a ponerle siempre lo que es la question mark o el signo de interrogación. So in this case, we have an example. That is this one. Have you did summer a good? We are going to change that phrase into, did you have a good summer? So in that case, just we are going to order the words. Solo vamos a ordenar las palabras. Let's see, I'm going to show you the whole uh, exercise. We have four sentences. Watch television, did you last night? Have dinner, you did last night? Go to work yesterday, you did? Go to the movies they did on Wednesday. Les voy a dar dos minutos para que eh, piensen en el orden correcto de las preguntas y luego las vamos a ir escribiendo y vamos a revisarlas, ¿verdad? Dos minutos para que puedan encontrar el orden correcto de la pregunta. Okay, let's begin. What television did you last night? ¿Cómo sería esa pregunta eh, con su orden correcto? Did you watch, watch television last night? Okay. Did you watch television last night? Okay, we are going to do it with a uppercase. Did you watch television? Last night. Y vamos a poner el signo de interrogación. En este caso, no solo le vayan a poner TV, tienen que ponerle television completo porque si no, no se lo va a tomar como bueno. Then, mm -hmm. second one. Have dinner you did last night? Did you, did you have, have dinner last night? You have 
Did you have dinner last night? Y el question mark. Go to work yesterday, you did. Did you go to work yesterday? Did you go to work yesterday? Yes. Question mark. And the last one. Go to the movies they did on Wednesday. Did they, they go, go to the to movie on Wednesday? Did you go to the movies on a Wednesday? Le faltó el day. Papi, ya me dinero. Day. Sí. Day de ellas, ellas. Oh, did they? Ah, yes. Did they, of course, did they go? Did they go? Tatiana, tell me. Una pregunta Dígame. para el pasado. Este es el pasado simple que estamos viendo, sí. ¿verdad? Para el pasado simple, en las preguntas siempre va a ir primero el auxiliar. En este caso, cuando esté utilizando el DIE, que es el auxiliar que nosotros utilizamos mayormente para las preguntas en pasado, siempre va a ir eh, al principio. Si está utilizando el was y el were, siempre van a ir al principio. Primero es el auxiliar, el verbo to be en pasado, eh, la WH question, eh, were, y luego va el sujeto. Así que siempre para pregunta tiene que ir el auxiliar, o el was o el were, o una WH word. No importa qué tipo de auxiliar sea, siempre va a ser al principio. Sí, porque como en las preguntas lo que hacemos es cambiar el orden. Entonces, si usted en su oración simple tiene el sujeto, luego el auxiliar, luego el verbo, cuando vaya a transformarlo a pregunta, simplemente va a cambiar el orden. El auxiliar va primero, luego el sujeto y luego el verbo. Y en una respuesta positiva. En este caso, si usted tiene, por ejemplo, did you go to work yesterday? Usted va a responder, yes, I did. O, yes, I went to my work or something like that. Pero si solo utiliza short answers o respuestas cortas, sí tiene que agregar el auxiliar. Porque tiene que concordar con el tiempo. No puede decir usted, yes, I do porque no concuerda con el tiempo, sino que tiene que decir, yes, I did. Sí, lo hice. Mm -hmm. Exactamente. Gracias. You're welcome. So, in this case, we are going to see if they are correct. So, let's go. And it is not charging. Oh, my God. Okay. Correct. All of them are correct. So, in the first one, did you watch television last night? Second one, did you have dinner last night? Number three, did you go to work yesterday? And the last one, did they go to the movies? Yes, on Wednesday, I mean. So those are the correct answers. Ahí tenemos las respuestas correctas. Now, I'm going to stop this one. And we're going to go to the document. Vamos a ir al documento. Y vamos a hablar de un vocabulario. So let me go to the document. So in this case, we're going to talk about summer. Vamos a hablar del verano. And in this case, I want to divide the vocabulary into different categories. Um, we are going to have a weather, we are going to have clothing and accessories. And also we are going to talk about um, 
activities and places. Así que vamos a tener cuatro categorías en las que vamos a hablar de vocabulario que se relaciona con el verano. Vamos a hablar primero de lo que son eh, el clima, luego ropa y accesorios, luego lugares, luego actividades y lugares. Así que vamos a hacer como cuatro pequeñas listas eh, de actividades. But I, let me, yes, I think, give me a second. Ah, uh, es, I can do it because it is in the same place. Okay. In this case, we're going to talk about vocabulary. Summer. Vocabulary. Number one. Weather. Vamos a hablar de palabras que podemos utilizar para referirnos a lo que es el clima en verano. Nosotros podemos decir, ah, está caliente. That's it in, in summer. But we have different words that we can use when we're talking about uh, weather in summer. And in this case, I have a short list of words that we can use. Let me see. I need to do it like this. So in the first word, we have sun. The word sun, that is sol in Spanish, hot, caliente, sunny, soleado, heat wave, es como um, una ola de calor, sweaty, es cuando sudamos, humid, húmedo, because in summer, I don't know why, but eh, almost all the time is like very humid, um, and it is kind of weird because eh, there is hot, but in, at the same time we have like this kind of a weather. Bright, that is brillante, because of the sun. Rainy in some places, it's rain when there is a summer. And also dry, seco. Así que tenemos estas palabras para eh, que las podemos utilizar cuando hablamos del clima. Sun, el sol. Hot, caliente. Sunny, soleado. Head wave or heat wave, una ola de calor. Sweaty, sudoroso. Humid, húmedo. Um, bright, brillante. Rainy, lluvioso. Y dry, seco. En algunos lugares llueve, pero aquí no es muy común que pase. Then, the second one. Clothing and accessories. Clothing and accessories. Yes, it is related, but I need the two words. I mean, so in this case, we have different uh, words that we can use when we're talking about clothes and accessories. That is almost the same thing, but we know that we need to have the two words. Shorts, pantalones cortos, t-shirt, camiseta, tank top. Son como estos centros sin, sin mangas. Skirt, falda, dress, vestido, sandals, sandalias, sunglasses, los lentes de sol. Bathing suit. Swim trunk. Swim 
simple drops. Google's Padding cap. Son estas um, los gorros para bañarse. Sun hat, los sombreros que se utilizan para ir a la playa. Sunscreen. La, el bloqueador. And water shoes. Que son estos zapatos especiales para andar en el agua. Then, number three. And in the number three, we have the activities that we can do in summer. And you know that it's not just to go to the beach and something like that. We can do a lot of things uh, in summer. Because in some cases, summer means vacation and all other things. So we have backpacking. That this one is to go on a hike uh, with a backpack and equipment to enable a person to stay outdoors um, overnight. Esto es como irse de, de mochilero, porque es como ir a un viaje de eso donde pues llevamos nuestras cosas en una mochila y nos permite um, podernos quedar a dormir fuera. Then we have bicycling. That this one is to ride a bicycle to, uh, for fun and sport. Es como hacer ciclismo. Boating. This one is to ride a boat, obviously. Uh, it can be a power boat, a canoe, a kayak, sailboat. And this one is for pleasure. Es... Um, Usar este tipo de botes eh, pequeños, ¿verdad? No estamos hablando de botes muy grandes, sino que botes pequeños y más que todo se hace por diversión. Then, camping. Irse de campamento. O acampar. Fishing, pescar. Frisbee. Es el típico juego de frisbee que nosotros vemos en algunos parques. Gardening, for the people that uh, don't like to go outside, uh, you can stay in your house uh, doing this activity, this gardening. That is the activity of growing plants for pleasure and or for food. Um, cuando están de vacaciones o en el verano pueden sembrar plantas en casa, experimentar con ese, con ese tema para poder tener plantas ya sean florales, frutales o para alimento. Hiking. This one is walking for a long distance, usually in the woods or just in a place away from a town of many people. Es diferente del backpacking, porque en este caso es como eh, hacer un tramo eh, caminando, ¿verdad? A través del bosque o cosas así, pero no llevamos como tanto equipo para quedarnos ahí. En cambio, el backpacking, sí, porque llevamos como un montón de cosas en la maleta que nos sirven para quedarnos en la noche. Road trip, un viaje en carretera. Sightseeing. This one is the activity of visiting new places of interest. Esto es como apreciar el paisaje. Vamos a lugares nuevos. Y pues disfrutamos de las nuevas vistas. And then we have surfing. Que es surfear. Then number four. Places. Lugares. Related to the summer. We have the amusement park. El parque de diversiones. We have the beach, that is the most common place, la playa.
the lake, el lago, the park, el parque, summer camp, como campamentos de verano, water park, parques acuáticos, the woods, los bosques, and the yard, que es el patio, very, very, um, for the people that don't like to go outside, podemos salir a nuestro patio, a hacer diferentes actividades. So for this a topic is kind of short because it's just a vocabulary. Es un vocabulario corto de palabras que podemos utilizar para el verano. Ya tenemos eh, cuatro eh, pequeñas listas. The first one is um, related to the weather. We have uh, different words then for clothing and accessories. And you know that we can have a more word, but in this case, we're going to use just the most common words, uh, different activities that we can perform in, in summer. And you know that we have another activities. Uh, tenemos otras actividades que podemos hacer en verano, like um, reading, watching TV, watching movies, um, painting, um, cooking, a lot of things that we can do, but in this case, we have just these ones. Then we have the places. We can go to different places when we are in on vacations. And we have these ones that are the very common words. Then I have a short exercise. I'm going to write the place and the activity, and you are going to tell me, um, what are the activities that you are going to do in that place and all of that things. Voy a poner el lugar y la actividad y ustedes me van a decir um, qué lugar pertenece a qué actividad. So, let's see. Number one, the beach. Number two, the yard. Number three, the park. Number four, the lake. Number five, the woods. And we have here, I mean, this one is places. And here, activities. We have A, hiking. B, boating. C, surfing. Frisbee. And number five, that is E, I mean, gardening. So we're going to mark in colors. For the beach, we are going to use white, white, I mean, yellow. For the beach, what is the activity that we can do in, on the beach? Hiking, boating, surfing, frisbee, or gardening. ¿Cuál es la actividad que podemos hacer en la playa? De esas que están ahí. Surfing. Surfing. Good. Perfect. Excellent. Then, the yarn. I'm going to use a green like this. For the yarn, para el patio. ¿Qué podemos hacer en el patio? Gardening. Gardening, good. This one, yes. 
the park. Vamos a utilizar otro color para el parque. I mean, don't move. For the park, I'm going to use this one. The park. ¿Qué podemos hacer en el parque? Hiking, boating, or frisbee. Podemos ir a caminar, usar el bote, frisbee, good Margarita, frisbee. El frisbee es aquella, um, el, es como un plato, ¿verdad? Que se, lo podemos lanzar y todo eso. En este caso en El Salvador no es muy común porque pues no tenemos ese tipo de parques así, pero es una actividad que se hace ahí. Then, the lake. Para el lago, ¿qué actividad podemos hacer en el lago? Hiking or boating. Boating. Boating, good. Boating. It's kind of different the color. It's kind of darker. This one? Yes. And the last one, of course, the woods. Is hiking. So there we have the activities and the places in which we can go to um, do some activities when we are on y esa es la parte del vocabulario para el verano. No es muy larga, sino que en ese caso no utilizamos las comidas y cosas así, sino que solo los lugares, actividades, eh, ropa y el clima. But we have different words that we can also use. Now, let me go to the platform because we are going to complete the activities there. And we have a short conversation here that it was the first one, but then I did another one. For this one, es una pequeña conversación. Complete the conversation by using the correct word, the verb in the past tense. Did you enjoy your summer? Yes, I did. I have, and I go to the beach a lot. So for the first one, did you? How can we find enjoyed in past? No. Enjoyed in past. ¿Quién puso esto? El verbo enjoy. Enjoy it. Good. En este caso solo van a escribir el verbo. Yes, I did. I, el pasado de have. 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 I go, el pasado de go. Went. Went. Okay. Let's check. Wait. Oh, this one is incorrect. What is the correct form of this one? Porque lleva el auxiliar no va a cambiar la forma del verbo. Ah, very good. Did you enjoy? Let's see. That's correct. Ahí está. Muy bien. En esa parte, como ya dijimos, llevamos el auxiliar. Ya no necesitamos cambiar el verbo. Por eso es necesario, ¿verdad? Que nos fijemos bien en el uso de estos auxiliares. En el caso de la segunda, pero si yo también llevo el auxiliar en la segunda. Yes, but it's completely different. ¿Por qué es diferente? Porque en este caso yo estoy respondiendo. Yes, I did, punto. Ahí se me termina mi respuesta y luego sigue mi oración. I had a great summer. Pero en la primera, como es la pregunta, yo ya llevo el auxiliar al inicio y ya no necesito cambiar el verbo. Así que ahí sí tenemos que ser un poquito más cuidadosos, ¿verdad? 
para que no nos vaya a salir malo. Ahí sí lo vamos a poner así como eh, de esta forma. So, those are the answers. And we have a last thing that we are going to do right now is to watch a video that is this one that is called Weekend Stories because we are going to talk about um, a technique. So we are going to listen this part or we are going to read this information. So let's pay attention. But I don't know if I am sharing the sound. So give me a second. Vamos a hablar de sharing stories, que es, um, or weekend stories, es historias de fin de semana. So let's see, what is this about? And this is the last video of the section. Oh, yes. Hi, everyone. In this class, develop skills. Okay, wait. In reading for main ideas and details. We'll do this by reading an article title, Weekend Stories. Weekend Stories. Kelly. I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend's wedding. She got married at home. All her friends and family went. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After the ceremony, her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her, and I really like her husband. Robert. I had an awful weekend. My friends and I went to a rock concert. I had a terrible time. It took three hours to drive there. I didn't like the music at all. And after the concert ended, our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got us. We finally got home at 10 this morning. I am so tired. Aaron. I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friends took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. First, we put up the tent. Then we built a fire, cooked dinner, and told stories. We got up early on Sunday and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. So there we have the um, the read the reading that we have on the platform. In this case, is to um, learn how to search information uh, or a specific information. In this case, because um, in that part you are going to develop a skills in reading for many ideas and details. Eso es más que todo para que ustedes um, aprendan o desarrollen la, el hábito o la destreza de encontrar información en específico o detalles en las lecturas. En este caso, si nos hicieran preguntas sobre la lectura, pues nosotros tendríamos que buscar información en específico de las cosas que ellos dijeron. Pero en este caso, we have three different people that are talking about their um, their weekend, and they were like uh, having different kind of weekend. Tenemos tres diferentes um, situaciones en este caso con el, el fin de semana. And we have Kelly that she went to a, to a wedding. Ella fue a un matrimonio. Fue algo bonito porque ella está hablando de que um, es su mejor amiga. Ella se casó en su casa. And uh, she was like, all her friends and family went. Toda la familia fue, los amigos. Um, she looked fantastic. Se veía increíble. She wore a beautiful dress. 
after the ceremony, her parents served a wonderful meal. Ella utilizó un vestido muy bonito. Después de la ceremonia, sus papás sirvieron una comida increíble. Eh, I am really happy for her and I really like her husband. Está muy feliz por ella y le, le cae bien el esposo de la amiga. So in that case, we can say that eh, she had a very good week and ella tuvo un fin de semana muy bonito. Then we have Robert, that is the um, other face of the, of the coin, as we said. Es como la otra cara de la moneda. Uh, because he um, had a very terrible uh, weekend because he now is very, very tired uh, because he went to a concert, a rock concert, and he didn't like the music. Él está cansado, eh, fue a un concierto de rock, no le gustó la música, tuvo que manejar tres horas y se le arruinó el carro. So imagine that it's a very, very bad uh, situation uh, for someone. So in that case, he has a very bad weekend. And then we have Erin, that is the last um, uh, people in this um, reading. And she is uh, talking about that she had an interesting weekend. Uh, she went camping for the first time. Ella fue a acampar por primera vez. So, ella ha tenido un fin de semana bastante interesante. Um, then she said, my friends took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. First, we put up the tent. Then we built a fire, cooked dinner, and told stories. Hizo muchas cosas, ¿verdad? La fueron a traer el sábado. Eh, manejaron hasta el sitio, ¿verdad? Donde iba a estar el campamento. Pusieron primero la tienda, luego eh, encendieron un fuego, cocinaron, contaron historias. Then eh, we got up early on Sunday and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. Fueron a, a pescar el domingo. Y este, dice que no le gusta mucho acampar, pero eh, vivió situaciones muy interesantes. So in this case, we have three different eh, ideas, three different situations that people lived on the weekend. I hope that you live or that you experience a great weekend um, this week, uh, this weekend that is going to uh, happen in a couple of uh, hours, I guess. So I hope that you have a really good weekend um, this, this week. And remember that you need to complete your activities on the platform. Uh, we are going to end the, the sessions um, the next week and you need to have all your work done. Así que um, tienen que trabajar en, el, en la plataforma para no eh, atrasarse. Acuérdense que ya la próxima semana es la última y pues pasando ya del jueves de la próxima, I mean, el viernes de la próxima semana, pues ya no van a tener eh, tantas posibilidades de poder completar sus eh, actividades. Recuerden que la otra semana vamos a trabajar hasta el viernes. Tell me, Francisco. Your microphone is off. Con usted. Bah, sí, gracias. Eh, realmente yo como sí me costó entrar, ingresar, poder ingresar a la plataforma, incluso me uh -huh. estuvieron ayudando eh, compañeros suyos, ¿verdad? Pero hasta hoy pude, ya me pudieron apoyar con eso, ya como se debe, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, este, yo voy un poquito en lo que es la plataforma atrasadito, pero me voy a tratar ya de ponerme lo más pronto al día con todo, ¿verdad? Para poder estar ahí al día. Sí, en ese caso, si llega a tener algún problema, o sea, con algún ejercicio que encuentre un poco difícil, puede pedir ayuda, ya sea en el grupo o directamente conmigo, eh, para ir resolviendo las actividades lo más rápido posible, para que no se vaya a atrasar, porque ya vamos por la sección 4, entonces es bastante trabajo, ¿verdad? No son actividades muy largas, pero sí eh, puede llegar a atrasarse un poco. Así que si tiene algún problema, usted manda la captura y ahí se le va a ayudar en el grupo. 
Okay, gracias. Mm -hmm. You're Thanks. welcome. So, okay. we are going to end the session here. Vamos a terminar acá la sesión. And we are going to see each other on Monday. So, have a really good night and a great weekend. And see you on Monday. Good night. 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 Good